All right, today we are going to learn about three or four strategies for multiplying by 10. Some of these strategies we have already used. So you're just going to be using larger numbers to multiply. So let's read the problem it wants us to answer. Animation for a computer drawn cartoon requires about 20 frames per second. How many frames would need to be drawn for a 30 second cartoon? Okay. It says over here that the phrase 20 frames per second means that 20 frames are needed for each second of animation. So, how does this help you know what operation you need to use? What am I going to use here in my problem? Mackenzie? So, which operation am I going to use with the 20 frames per second? No, I'm talking addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Those are my operations that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to have to multiply it. So let's go ahead and highlight our question it asked us, which is, say it with me, how many frames would need to be drawn for a 30-second cartoon? As this little problem over here tried to help us with, we need the 20 frames. We also need the 30-second cartoon. So as Mackenzie told you, we are needing to take the 30 groups, of 20 frames. What do we need to circle? What did I circle? And we need to be able to tell it we need to multiply. What are the numbers in our problem, Logan? Thank you. So we're taking 30 groups of 20 frames and we need to multiply that. So that is what operation we are going to be using. The first strategy is using place value, which we have used before. As you can see, you're taking two-digit numbers times a two-digit number. You can think of 30 as being three tens. So they're taking 20 times 30, and you're going to take 20 times three tens. So you're going to put the three in here. Do you see this? 20 times 3 tenths. Why are we taking it times 3 tenths? Who can tell me that? Cheyenne. Well, 30 can also be said as 3 tenths. Okay, it's in the tenths place. It has one zero, so it can be used as 3 tenths. So all we're doing is changing one of our numbers to tenths. So when I take 20 times 3 tenths, how many tenths do I get total? It's the same thing we've been doing. Fourth grade, 20 times 3 tenths. So how many total tens am I going to have when I'm done multiplying? Bailey? 60. 60 tens. Now, when I have 60 tens, how many zeros are in a 10? One. So I have the 60 and I add how many more zeros? One. Do you see where they get 600? Okay, if you notice, you could also have taken the two times the three, which gives you what? Two. And how many zeros do I have in both of my problems? One. So one plus one gives me? Two. So how many are on my answer? <coughs> two. That's another way of doing the multiplication, the other way without using place value. We need to be able to see, what do I do if I'm using place value? Did they take the 20 and break it up? No, they only took the 30 and broke it up. So they're breaking one of the numbers up into tens. They're leaving the other one the same. See how they're not changing both of them. See that? Okay, you're all staring at me like you have no idea what I'm talking about. I want you to understand they're only changing one of the numbers, not both. Yes, Logan? In what box? What does it say right here? We have to start listing. 30 groups of 20 frames because we're using the 30 groups over here for the 30 seconds. The 20 frames comes from your problem. So everything I wrote comes from where? From your problem. So then you're going to multiply it, which is what we just took. Now we're going to find it another way. Place value is only one of those ways. What's the second way it lists for us? Read your paper. 
Associative property. So how many of you remember associative property from last chapter? What are we moving around? The parentheses are the groupings, okay? So you can think of 30 as 3 times 10. You see there how they're breaking up 30 into 3 times 10. So over here they took 30 and changed it to 3 tenths. Now they're changing 30 to 3 times 10, okay? All of this is just the normal problem, okay? Now they're breaking it up 20 times 3 times 10. Well, is it going to be the same thing if I leave 3 times 10? If I leave 3 times 10, what do I get? 30. So is it okay to leave the parentheses under 3 and 10? Yes. Look what they chose to do. If you leave it exactly like 3 times 10, you're going to have the same thing you started with. So what did they decide to do with it? They changed it. Where did they move it to? 20 times 3. So we're going to do 20 times 3 first and then multiply it by the 10 that's left over. So what's 20 times 3? 60, and we're going to add the 10 back, and then we can multiply that. Now, the same thing is true here. I can take my zeros away. 6 times 1 is 6, and how many zeros do I have left? 2, so there's my answer. So we know that 600 frames would need to be drawn. Okay, so that's just two ways. You can break it up into 10s. Or you can use associative property. You have to make sure that when you use associative property, you're moving your parentheses from where you started them to where it's easier for us to multiply. Because if you leave them like this, you're going to have the same thing you started with. Do you want the same thing you started with? No, that's why we're doing the actual strategy, is to move it around. Okay, it says down here, to compare the number of zeros in each factor to the number of zeros that are in the product. And what do you notice? This has nothing to do with what we did for multiplication. It has to do with the zeros. So take a look at your zeros in both of your factors, your 20 and your 30, and then look at your answer. Okay, how do they compare? Kenzie? Okay. So you have one in each one of your products, or excuse me, your factors, so your product's going to have two, because you have one in each one. So our answer is going to be, there is one zero. In each factor. So you will have. Two in your product. There's one zero in each factor, so you will have two in your product. The one from the first factor and the one from the second for a total of two. When you have that written, please turn your page. Again, this is a time to listen and not just copy. All right, on the back page, we are now going to have a new problem. We're not going to do 30 times 20 again. We're going to do 15 times 20, and this time we're going to use the number one. So we're going to draw jumps to show our product, and I want you to take a look at what they chose to do first over here. Instead of taking 15 times 20 right away, they're going to take what? 15 times, 15 times 2. Isn't that going to be easier? No. So we're going to count by twos as we do 15 of them. Are you ready? <coughs> count with me. 2, 4, 6, 8, Now count and make sure you have 15 jumps. So if I took 15 jumps, 
Doing two at a time, I would end up with 30. Now, if you notice, what does our number line on the bottom here go by? 20. 20s. Before we were going by two, now we're going by 20s. Let's count by 20s. 20, 40, 50, 60, 70, 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. So what am I going to end up with my answer on this one? 300. 300. Now look at your zeros. We know that 15 times 2 is what? 30. And I have a zero on the 20, so I have to add it to it to make it a total of 300. So for any of those of you that like number lines, there's a way to do so. Okay. All right, the next one is using mental math to find 14 times 30. How many of you remember the having and doubling strategy from last chapter? You're going to have one number and double another one? That's what this is doing. So they're going to take step one, says find half of 14 to make the problem simpler. So when they do that, they're dividing 14 and 2. So when I take 14 divided by 2, what do I get? 7. So fill that in. So when, since I did the division there, okay, they want us to go ahead and multiply the 7 times the 30 without doing the other part yet. So what is 7 times 30? Good, 210, so you're going to fill that in there. Now they're going to do the doubling, okay? So they're going to double 210. So what we did the last time was we would take 14 divided by 2, and we would take 30 times 2. Instead of doing that, they're going to do one step at a time, go ahead and multiply, and then do the double. Does everybody understand the difference? So, 210 times 2 is what? 420. I don't think it's 20. The last one where? This one? Yeah. It comes from up here. You only took 14, you divided 14 in half, you still have 30, so they brought it down. See that? Okay. So they're just going to double the 210. Questions about that? So it's a little bit different than what we did the last time. Okay? Yes? All right, so let's use our mental math down here to multiply. We'll see if you can remember which one you need to use. Mental math to find 12 times 40. So the mental math one was using which strategy? Having and doubling. So which number am I going to have? 12. So if I have 12 and I have it, so we're going to take 12. What am I going to use? Divided by. Divided by. What am I dividing by? Two. two. This is something some of us did not know how to do the last time. We could not remember if we were supposed to divide by 2 or what we were supposed to divide by. When I divide 12 and 2, what do I get? 6. 6. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take 6 times 40. What do I get there? So 240. Do you see what I did? We took the 12 divided by the 2. We got the 6. We're going to go ahead and multiply it by the 40 that's still left. Is everybody following? Yeah. Now what am I going to do with my 240? I'm going to double it, so I'm going to take it times 2. two. And what do I get? Very good. 480 is my answer there. Okay. All right, now we're going to have to use place value to find 12 times 40. So you're using the same problem, but a different way of doing that. So go back and look at your place value from over here. Remember what they did? They changed one of them to what? A 10. Very good. So they changed one of their numbers to 10. So which one am I going to change the 10s? The 40. So I'm going to leave the 12. And I'm going to change the 40 to what? Or what? 10. Or 10s. It's in the 10s place, so I'm going to change it to 4 10s. So that's how you're going to write it. 12 times 4 10s. Okay. When I multiply 12 times 4, I get what? 48, and I have to keep it with 10s. Yes. So what is 48 10s? 
Right.